Hi, I'm Lynn Lang. Welcome to Teaching Kids Programming. In this short video, we're going to give you an introduction to working with our courseware just by sampling it. And our courseware is for Java. So as I said, we're going to do a demo class, a very abbreviated version of each section of our courseware for the first lesson in the TKP library. Before we start, I'm just going to show you all the different sections for each unit. A unit will teach one to three programming concepts and each of the sections is taught a slightly different way in order to expose the students to different aspects of these concepts. So we're going to get started showing you a little preview of the recipe. The recipe teaches one to three programming concepts and it's instructor-led. So here we are inside the programming environment. We did a customization of Eclipse and you can get this from the link that you see on this page from GitHub. Our courseware is free and open source. And once you start it up, you'll see this environment. So to get started as a teacher, you lead the students through starting with the line numbers as they're ordered at the end of the line. So I'm just going to do the first line or two and then the last line or two just to show you how it works. So as a teacher, I'm just going to go ahead with my student and say, can you please read out the English on line one? Show the tortoise. Great. So in English, we uh, have, start our sentences with verbs. In programming, we start with nouns. So can you tell me what's the noun in that sentence? Tortoise. Great. So if you can just make a new line after the English line and then start typing T-O-R so that we can translate this into Java. Now the first rule of programming, rule that we're going to talk about over and over, is to be lazy. And tortoise is kind of hard to spell, so there is a shortcut on the keyboard that you're going to use often. It's control and space. If you press control and space, tell me what you see. A menu of options. Great, and not only do you have a menu, but if you just press enter when you see the one you want, It'll actually finish it for you. So press enter and tell me what happens. Well, it did complete the word tortoise. Now, in programming, we separate our uh, words with dots. So we're going to put a dot and then tell me what's the verb in the sentence above. Show. Great. And it, um, we also really like to use our tools. So we're actually going to just press the arrow key up and down until we find a match to show. And uh, did you see it? Did you find it? Yep. It's show. Great, and then what do you do to uh, have the computer type that for you automatically? Press enter. Great, so we're almost done, but one of the things, again, in our editor, we want to see that we have um, an error here, and we want to make sure to read the error. So can you read that out for me? Syntax error. Insert semicolon to complete block statements. Okay, so what do you think you do there? Put a semicolon. Great, so let's try it. And did that take the error away? Yes. Cool. So now we want to always uh, run it and make sure that we translated it correctly. And to do that, you just click on the play button. So once you do that, tell me what you see. A tortoise. Fantastic. Now the last thing that we have for each line is once we've successfully translated it, we want to get rid of the line above. And to do that, you just click somewhere in it, and then you press and hold the Control and the D for delete. And be careful to not delete until you've fully translated it. So now we're actually going to skip down to the next line to translate, and can you read that out for me? Move the tortoise 50 pixels. Great, and what's the noun there? Tortoise. So what, what are you going to type? T-O-R. And then what? Control space. Why are you doing that? So you don't have to type out the whole tortoise. Cool, and then what do you do to complete it? Press enter. Cool, and then what do you do next? Put a dot. Cool, and then what's the verb in the sentence? Move. And uh, what do you do uh, next to get the move to come up? Use the arrow keys to look for move. Okay, and I see move and move to. Which one are you going to pick? Move. Great. And then what else do you have to do to finish this off? Put how many pixels we want it to move. And that was how many? 50. Cool. And are we done yet? No. What do you have to do? Semicolon. Cool. And then what's the next thing? Press play. Awesome. Looks good. And the last thing? Delete the line. And how do you do that again? Control D. Very good. It looks like you have finished the whole recipe and let's run it. And you made a blue square. Very cool. So after the kids get through the recipe, then the next section of our courseware is a screencast, a YouTube screencast, of that same recipe being done by the TKP authors with much more detail and much more attention paid to concepts. 
we believe in experiential learning or uh, front-loaded learning. So the kids code first and then they are exposed to uh, what the concepts mean in greater detail after we have their interest. And I'll put a link to the one for this recipe on this particular video so you can take a look. They're about 10 minutes long. The next section of the recipe is the variation. And this is designed to teach refactoring. It is an instructor-led section and you can find out more information in the courseware lesson plan, but we'll just give you kind of a flavor of what it looks like now. Well, we've made our square, but in the real world of programming, it is very rare that you are done once you turn in sort of your first uh, solution. So very, very commonly, your customer will see what you've coded and want to make some changes. So we want to help you learn how to do that. In order to do that, we have to kind of understand what we've made. So if you can take a look at what we've made here and then tell me one or two things about what we've made. So tell me one or, one or two properties. Go ahead. It's blue. Okay, so that would be the line color is currently blue. Good. And then is there another property of this? Uh, the line is two pixels wide. Okay, so the line width is two pixels wide. Okay. So let's say that our customer wanted us to change this out. So let's go look at our code and see. Uh, can you tell me which line of code sets the uh, color to blue? 14. Line 14. Great. So if we wanted to change to a different color, how would we do that? Get rid of the dot blues dot blue. Okay. And what color would you like to change it to? Uh, green. Okay, so then you would want to go to the greens. Okay, and then which green do you want? You can see the colors over here. Which one do you like? That's good. The dark green? Okay, so let's do that one. And of course, we're using our tab key all the time, and then we want to see how it looks. That's green square. Now, the second thing, so we went ahead and changed it from blue to green, is the line width. This one's a little bit more tricky. Which line of code sets the width of the pen to two pixels? There isn't one. There isn't one. So how is that value being set? What do you think? It's just what it automatically does. Yep, that's called a default. So in order to make a change to it, we first have to uh, make it exposed. And in order to do that, we have to bring up the tortoise. And just like we learned about uh, setters and getters for the pen color, uh, we're going to look at them for the pen width. Do you remember what is the difference between set and get? Get tells you things, set changes things. Great. So if we were going to make a change to the width of the line that the, the tortoise draws, which one do you think you'd use, set or get? Set. So let's press an S, and then of these, which one would you pick? Set pen width. Okay, so we're going to use set pen width, and you said you thought it was two pixels. So let's just check that and set it to two, and then go ahead and finish, it, finish the line by using a semicolon. Great, and let's run it, and let's see if it does the same thing. So then the process of refactoring, sometimes you have to just say what's already there in a different way so that you can then change that. So we haven't really changed it yet, but we made it um, uh, available for changing. Now, um, we want to change the width of that to how, how wide do you want it? 20. 20. Okay, that's going to be a really thick line. Let's see how it looks. Wow, that's thick. Is that, is that cool? Do you want to change it again? Yeah. What do you want to change it to? Um, 20 divided by 2. Okay. So now you're letting the computer do math. Always a good thing. Cool. How about we take a really humongous number like 200? What do you think that's going to look like? Wide. Let's see. That's weird, isn't it? Cool. A lot of fun. A utility that we created to help teachers is called the Virtual Proctor. Take a look at our source code on GitHub to see how that works. I'm going to show you a screenshot or two next on what some of the kids did during variations. It's a whole lot of fun. The next section of our courseware is the quiz, and the quiz is designed to be done by the students who are pairing, and it's designed to verify mastery for the students so that they can validate how much they have learned. 
and it's done in the editor. It's instructor facilitated. So again, we'll show you one or two of the questions just to give you a sense of how that goes. So before we get started with the quiz, I'm just going to have you guys open it. So it's over here under quizzes. You can see under quizzes. And uh, then you can see the simple score quiz. Now our quiz is a little bit different than other quizzes in that it's not a written test. It's actually a code test. And you can run it as many times as you want. The idea is to get all the answers right. So we're going to go ahead and run it right now. You can see how many questions are there here for you to do? Four. There are four questions. So probably not going to do very good because we didn't do any of them. So ooh, boo, got all four wrong. But we're going to fix that. So just like the regular recipe, the way that you want to do this is you want to answer each question by turning the English into Java code. So we're going to start with question one, and I'm going to have you read that English out. Turn the tortoise one-fifth of 360 degrees to the right. Cool. Now you tell me how you start. What are you going to type on line 11? The noun is tortoise, so T-O-R. Then you get the menu, so you can press enter for tortoise. And then separating words with thoughts. And then finding the verb turn and pressing enter. Um, and then you want to say 360 divided by 5. And then a semicolon. All right, and then how do you check to see if you got the answer right? Press play. Cool, so you got one right so far. So um, we're gonna come back to this quiz in progress. All right, so you're doing really good. Let's go ahead and run it. And you got three right, and it looks like a cool star, but you're not quite done. So let's do the last one. So what are you gonna type here? You tell me. Uh, well, the noun is tortoise. Um, and we're changing the width. So we're going to use a set pen width. And it looks like that should be 50. And let's run it and see if you got it all right. Oh, well, it's a cool shape, but you didn't quite get it right. So what do you, what, can you see what you need to change here? Oh, it was supposed to be five pixels. Yep. A hint for teachers is if the students get stuck to just have them reread the English and try to try to have them get the answer rather than you tell them the answer because they can generally figure it out. And that looks great. Good job. The next section of our courseware is called a deep dive. And this is designed to explore the concepts that were taught in depth using a technique from the open source world called a Cohen. A Cohen is of course uh, actually a, a method of contemplation that allows for learning. And these are instructor facilitated. The concept is that you get a line of code that has an underscore as a variable and the students have to replace the underscore with a string or a number and get the, uh, the method to pass. And it uses test-driven development. So again, it's best understood through uh, taking a look. So we're gonna go ahead and show you what that looks like now. All right, to get started with the deep dive here, I'm going to have you read the English. There's quite a few lines of English, but go ahead and just read it out for me. How to do deep dive. Step one, select the method name. Numbers do not need quotes on line 24. Press the run button. For PC, that's control F11. And for Mac, that's command function F11. Step two, read the name of the method that failed. Step three. Fill in the blank to make it pass. Step four, consider at least one thing that you just learned. Step five, advance to the next method. Do not change anything except the blank. All right, so this is a new thing. So where are you gonna put your cursor to start? Where are you gonna click? On line 27 in the blank. Line 27 in the blank, okay. And then what are you gonna do? Replace it with a number. Okay. So we're going to backspace to get rid of it. And what number are you going to put? Uh, 42. Okay. And then what are you going to do next? Click on the method name mm -hmm. and press play. And it looks like uh, your test passed. So what did you learn? That numbers do not need quotes. Okay, cool. So let's do the next one. Can you read the method name? Default width for the tortoise. All right, so tell me what you're going to do here. Well, the default width for the tortoise is 2. 
So I'm going to replace the blank with two. Okay. And then what? Click on the method name. Mm -hmm. Then press press control F11. Great. And it looks like that passed. Now just so that we can see that this is actually working, let's put a different number and see what happens. And then it, the test fails. So then what can you do to get more information? Read the error. So we can see the assertion error expected to but was three. So you're right. The pen width is the default pen width is uh, two. Cool. All right. Many of our courses have additional recipes, which we call extras, and we work with these in a variety of ways. Sometimes we have students do them individually rather than the typical way, which would be uh, in pairs, and it's a, a way to validate mastery in addition to the other parts of the lesson. And you'll see those in the lesson plans referenced as well. So we hope you enjoyed this short introduction. And to get started, just click on the link and get our courseware. Have a great day.